Welcome to tonight's show. Uh, this is the first time I had a guest, and both Ryan and I are very hopeful that this actually works and people will see this. So we're going to give it our best, best shot here. But at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the head coach of the Providence Boys basketball team, Mr. Ryan Miller, someone I've known. How long, Ryan, have we known each other? Oh, gosh. Since the, the glory days of uh, the St. Anthony Bears. and uh, St. Anthony Bears and, and Little League And baseball. I was with the St. Mary's uh, Cougars at that point. You were. Uh, and then, of course, the battles continued as I became a crusader and you were still <laughs> with the Mighty Bears. That's so, right, man. But here we it's are. Been, it's been a while. We, we shouldn't say how many years it would begin to date us. It's, it's been a while. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. It's been a while. So, Ryan, thanks for being the first guest on this uh, yet-to-be-named program. But I appreciate your time. And just thought since today would have been the start of March Madness and Right. Obviously, with what we're dealing with right now, that's not here. It's made sense to me to have a bit of a sports theme with tonight's edition. So here you are. Yes, here I am. Glad to be here. And uh, being the high class show it is, of course, I was, <laughs> I've been wearing my uh, Rhino shirt today. Very nice. Had Very nice. To, uh, for, for you, had to, had to class things up a little bit. Uh, well, I just went with a T-shirt. So I'm glad one of us is classing up the joint tonight. Uh, Ryan, if you don't mind, what, if you could kind of sum up what went through the process of you coming back to Providence. When I say coming back to Providence, I'm sure many people know you graduated from there. We were in the same graduating class. Uh, you coached at various times and then you went away for a bit, but, uh, what brought you back? Well, um, before I answer that, Steve, I will say thanks for doing this. We, we tuned in, uh, last night to a trivia night and I know, um, <laughs> The girls uh, and Reese as well also tuned in to your story time. So uh, definitely appreciate you doing that. I know a lot of people uh, out there are looking for things like this to kind of bring us together and have some sense of uh, normalcy in these very abnormal times. So uh, appreciate, I appreciate that. that Steve. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> you're going to pay me $20 for saying that, right, Steve? Uh, 50. 50. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, coming back to Providence, um, you know, what went into that? I would say mostly kind of the history that, that we had just alluded to when, you know, he said, hey, how long have, have we known each other? And you think, well, it goes back to our early, um, you know, childhood days in elementary school. Um, and then, of course, uh, through Providence and, and yeah. beyond and, and our, our Wives, of course, went to uh, St. Mary's, New Albany together. Um, I went to school with them as well um, through fifth grade. And, um, you know, so I guess what I'm trying to say with that is, is what brought me back is the community. Um, it is uh, my community. It is our community. Um, the deanery system, Providence High School, uh, that's that's uh, where I grew up. That was my uh, youth. And, um, and not only that, afterwards, of course, um, I, I coached for, for several years there with, with Coach Lefebvre and uh, during times when my brother and cousins and, and many close family friends were there. Um, so what brought me back was, I guess, that history, you know, um, and, you know, a, really a, a faith community. Um, and not only the history, but, but currently um, the likes of, of essentially our, our coaching staff that we have in place. Um, they, they essentially um, grabbed me, uh, took me into the basement of a dark uh, <laughs> restaurant <laughs> and said, we're doing this. Um, so uh, that there, that actually is a, uh, uh, some some truth to that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've um, heard. I just, I just wasn't locked in. There was just Lance was just standing in the doorway and just wouldn't let me out. But <laughs> that's that's the uh, only difference. Um, but but truthfully, that history that that all um, you know, I guess keeps us here in this community. Um, um, you know, it's it's a special community to a lot of us. And, and when I say community, I mean uh, Providence high school community and our entire deanery uh, to, to the likes of myself. And I know you as well, we kind of view that kind of all 
all uh, as one. Yeah, as one. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So, so that that's what uh, brings you back is 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 your love for that, and um, and then the many great people uh, specifically for me uh, that were going to be involved with this um, endeavor and, and on the coaching staff and uh, just knowing there are so many great people um, within that that community and just uh, wanting to be a part of it again. I, I understand a lot of what you're talking about because I, I have a lot of the same feelings, not only in my job, but in my history as well. Um, speaking of the team just a little bit, you know, outside of when you took over, um, nobody has to tell you it's been pretty uh, – lots of turnover in the program as of late, and I think, you know, people were looking for you to come in and kind of stabilize some things. So outside of just wins and losses, what, what were you hoping to establish this year with your guys? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, all of us coming together, um, certainly I would not be here if it weren't for, uh, I would not be back at Providence if it weren't for the great group of guys who I am coaching with. Um, and, you know, I, I, I say that like whenever, you know, it's, it's always uh, we and us um, because certainly nothing – that uh, we accomplished, you know, this year or uh, things we hope to accomplish moving forward could happen without just the, the great group of, of individuals that have come together, um, you know, to do this. So we collectively as, as a coaching staff um, kind of had the same, I guess, outlook or philosophies that, that are almost in a way um, – unspoken uh, obviously we we do speak about them but um essentially we all kind of wanted the same things for this program which is to you know you talked about you know stability and such and it's it's a it's a challenging gig and and one person can't do it by themselves it takes a group of uh, a collective like-minded group of people must come together um, to, to make it happen. And, and we certainly uh, have a collective um, mentality uh, when it comes to the things that we value in, in coaching and basketball and in life. Um, so we truly wanted this, as you said, you know, beyond wins and losses, we had no idea what the, win loss record would look like this year. Um, I honestly hadn't been paying a ton of attention to Providence over the past, you know, two, three, four years as I was at Floyd central and, you know, we'd face them once a season, but then being in class four a ball, you know, throughout the year, we play Providence early on. And, and then your, your kind of focus shifts to the likes of, you know, um, sectional opponents, yeah. New Albany, Jeffersonville, uh, um, you know, potential regional opponent schools from Evansville, Bloomington, and, and so on. Um, so we really didn't know what to expect. And I, I guess that's part of the unusual circumstance of us taking the job is, is honestly, none of us cared. Um, and, and I mean that, um, I guess, from a bigger picture or, or, or perspective in that we cared about the community and knew that, um, you know, we didn't know exactly what that timeline would be in terms of us being able to hopefully turn around and get some wins and losses, but that was not um, at the forefront of our mind. Um, sure. we, we wanted to, to establish um, a, a culture, a, a mentality, uh, you know, and, and bring back, um, you know, and, and uh, I want to be careful about how I say this because um, because other coaches have done a, a fine job as well. Um, but we wanted to bring back um, just a, a sense of, of pride within the program. And again, other coaches have worked really hard and, and, and done a nice job as well. But um, we knew that it would just take a, a collective effort um, of a lot of people and it would kind of be small steps. And, um, and that's what we focused on initially. 
where things just like our goals, like, well, we want to have the right type of attitude. And, and I know the other coaches um, wanted that as well, who have been there before. But again, it's, it's um, a lot of it is timing and, and, and good fortune um, <clears throat> and, and uh, having other, you know, really good people uh, in place there to, to help, help you get it done. So we talked yeah. about attitude and effort. Um, that's kind of been our mantra early on. And that's really what we want to establish is the right type of culture. Um, we talk about team, um, you know, a lot of the program things we base it basketball wise, things, uh, you know, from coach Lefebvre, me personally. And then of course, our other coaches bring unique perspectives. Um, Lance being at IU and playing under a great coach and Kelvin Sampson and playing professionally. And of course, Dan, uh, coaching under Bob Knight, uh, one of the greatest coaches in the history of basketball, and and our other guys too. Um, that new guys we brought on board, um, Chris Carruthers. So a lot of unique perspectives, but we all kind of wanted the same thing, um, you know. And and Coach Sturgeon at Floyd would talk about team, team, team all the time. So kind of meaning being unselfish, um, being about each other. So something. Uh, you know, we talked about early on is just establishing the right culture, um, meaning, you know, we, not me. Uh, let's think about each other before we think about ourselves. Um, you know, another thing we talk about is, you know, what am I doing uh, to help those around me uh, get better? And that needs to be our emphasis. And when you have awesome leaders um, and just great kids, uh, which is what we've had this year at Providence, um, you're able to start to establish some of those foundational pieces that are far more important than any type of win-loss record that you set forth for yourself. Because we feel that uh, if you get the right type of mentalities and attitudes in place, that those other things, the wins and losses, will take care of themselves. So toughness, wow. togetherness, energy, effort, and enthusiasm – attitude, accountability, and mentality of excellence um, are things that we, we talk to our guys about, and then our guys actually do it. You know the kind of kids we have, like Bryce Hutchins, who we call our MVP. Um, and, uh, you know, he wasn't our MVP because he averaged double digits and played 30 right. minutes a game. He was our MVP because he bought into that type of attitude, that type of mentality that um, – that we really wanted to instill and guys like him and all of our other seniors, Austin Grants, Austin Barnett, Fuge, Sterling, um, all those guys in no particular order. They're all awesome. And, um, and, and that's why we were able to, I think, accomplish some, some positive things because we had great kids who bought into those philosophies. Well, that was clear to anybody who, who watched you guys this year and watched the coaches and the players. And you mentioned kind of the wins and losses would take care of themselves if you were doing those right. things. And, and that proved to be true. I mean, I, I don't know if you're willing to admit that you foresee winning a sectional championship this year or not, but I mean, I think it's fair to say that that was not the, the outlook I think that anybody had for this team. And look what happened. You guys went out, you, you won a sectional championship on the home floor of I think what was considered the favorite uh, yeah. to win that. And, you know, just if you could tell us a little bit like how, how great that was and then dealing with, of course, where you are now from winning the sectional to soon after finding out that, that the tournament was going to be set aside for a while and how, how you handled the, the height of that uh, excitement and just being proud to, to be in there for the kids when obviously the news came out that, that you likely weren't going to be playing anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, boy, talk about two, uh, yeah, two extremes, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what an awesome special season we had, uh, in large part due to, again, as I said, the number of great people that, that were involved, uh, with, with this team uh, the, the great kids we had, uh, the fact that even though they had had some ups and downs and had some other coaches who certainly, you know, really cared about them and, and did their best, but, but the kids, um, you know, unfortunately hadn't, hadn't had a whole lot of success in terms of wins and losses, um, 
but to be able to, to keep that belief. Um, and, uh, you know, things went well for them early on. We were fortunate to get a several buzzer beater wins right out of the gate to help, um, uh, get some of that belief. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it just, it was a process and it carried over throughout the year and, and ultimately led to what you said, um, was, uh, certainly unexpected, uh, over the summer. Uh, I didn't know if we could win more than, um, a handful of games, uh, at first, you know, within the first few uh, weeks, you just didn't know. But um, the boys quickly showed that they were they were ready um, to have a good season, I think. And um, and they just continued to work hard, and and the coaching staff pushed them uh, very hard, uh, probably to points that they um, you know had not been challenged to go before, I suppose. Um, but, you know, as you said, uh, you never know what can happen when a group of people come together um, with a common vision, a common goal, and, and um, just a common, a common mentality of, uh, of, I guess, selflessness, being unselfish and being all about each other. And, and because of that, these boys were able to do things that um, – none of us quite thought, you know, maybe they could have done at the beginning of the year, but sure. as it went along, they certainly proved that they had it within them. And then to uh, finish the season, the way, the way we did for the boys to play really um, their absolute best basketball at the end of the season. And I think the greatest thing um, I think most coaches at least hope for is that your players uh, reach their potential, that your players and your team collectively can reach its potential. And we didn't know if we would ever get there by the end of the season and by that final sectional game. Um, I think we can, you know, with pretty good conviction say that, that our, our boys did that. Yeah. And um, we could not have been more happy and proud um, of them and for them to be able to, again, just battle through the adversity of, of, of for the seniors, uh, a career um, of kind of some ups and downs. And, and within this season too, it was, it was a very challenging season and things did not come easily. And we had to work all of us together very hard uh, to get there. So it, it does make, I think getting to that point when you've had to go through the, the, the adversity, the challenges, the difficulties, it makes it even sweeter, you know, at the end to right. be able to, to do that and to accomplish that. And man, what an awesome, you know, uh, week that was that, that night, what a special night. I mean, that night we were, as you know, I had a fundraiser for our lady and it was so yes, cool we being there and seeing everybody there. watching on their phone and following with the game. And, um, that was really cool to kind of have, you know, I couldn't be at the game, but I kind of felt like in some ways I was because so many people were following what you guys were doing during dinner yeah. and during the auction and all that stuff. So, well, yeah. I mean, you and we I, appreciate spoke, that. yeah, of course you and I spoke a few days ago and we we're kind of talking about just the state we find ourselves in now, how everything's changed, how wh what's led me to do stuff like this, because it's mm -hmm. kind of the only way we can connect right now. Right. Uh, you mentioned to me that, you know, you allowed yourself for a moment to kind of be upset and, you know, feel like, you know, this got taken away from us, but you said, you know, it didn't take you very long to realize, Hey, there's bigger issues right now yeah. than, than, oh, yeah. than what's taken from us. Um, do, you, do you think the boys got that message? Did, did they come around to it as well? We certainly talked about it. Um, you know, uh, it kind of it kind of hit us, I think. And, and by us, I don't just mean because with this issue, especially, we don't want to be thinking about um, ourselves, right? We don't want right. to be thinking about I and me. We want to be thinking about we and Back all to of your us. themes and, of the team, and, right? I mean, just kind of what you tried to install this. Yeah, year. right. Yeah, exactly. The same thing. And now this is taking on a, a, a bigger meaning than anything we faced 
throughout the course of the season. And that's, I think, sometimes, or a lot of times, really, uh, the hopes of athletics is that they can teach us some valuable lessons and takeaways that we can then carry on with us um, and apply in, in our lives, you know, um, for, for, for the boys that we coach, for the young men we coach, we hope that they can take it on with them, you know, um, as they move on from high school to college and then to other phases of their lives and, and then become, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, someday, um, you know, uh, contributors themselves as, you know, husbands and, and uh, fathers and, and such um, and, and community leaders. Um, but yeah, we were very disappointed to first, but you know, I don't think any of us fully comprehended the magnitude of, of what was really transpiring before us. Um, at least I didn't. Um, yeah. And, you know, so at first it was just kind of like, Oh man, you know, these things, um, you know, kind of our, our way of life, um, you know, is, is being, certainly adversely impacted and you know so the initial thought was oh, gosh let's think about ourselves for a second here and be disappointed that our boys who've worked so hard for something won't be able to fully experience you know this this regional you know opportunity which someone who's been fortunate enough to be there before like it is it's awesome it's mm-hmm. awesome for, for not only the, the kids, but for the whole community. So, you know, when at first they said, you know, hey, well, and it paralleled like the same thing with the NCAA tournament, right? It was, hey, okay, it's going to go on, but there aren't going to be any fans. You yeah. know, so it's like, oh, man, that's a bummer, you know. And at first, some of us, you know, now I'm not going to say it at all, but at first we were like, well, is this really necessary? Are we overreacting or what's going on? And, um, but – as you know, especially last week, things were changing not only daily, but almost hourly, you know, and, and everybody was feeling that very real, you know, uh, shift. And like you said, it really quickly went from, and we did as, as a group and, and Miss Ernstberger came in uh, as well, uh, Dr. Ernstberger and addressed the, the boys and said, you know, I feel so badly for you guys and, you know, to be the bearer of this news, but that's what we told her as well. Like this is these decisions and these times are entirely out of our hands. Um, sure. You know, so we simply have to, you know, acknowledge that it is unfortunate, um, but then move beyond that. And, and, and what we told our boys really, and, and, Hopefully a lot of us can look at it like this and I need to be reminded of it. Uh, I think we all do. Um, You know, instead of focusing on the negatives, which is easy to do at this time, um, let's, let's be grateful for some of the things, you know, we do have, Um, you know, so we told our boys like, Hey, you know, if this would have happened a week before you don't even get that sectional experience. Right. You know? And um, so let's, let's be grateful for the awesome experience that we got to share in with our community and, and, you know, some of the memories that we've made that will, I think truly last us a a lifetime, Um, you know, especially for the players. And um, that's something that, that we can be thankful for. And, and then beyond that, we said, okay, now let's take one step further and let's, let's try to stop thinking about ourselves all together and let's start thinking about all the other people that this is impacting. Um, You know, at first, you know, we try to draw the parallels athletically with the NCAA tournament to our boys and just realized, Hey, you know, and, and the other teams for that matter in the state, then, Hey, let's, let's, let's go beyond our, you know, the realm of athletics because this goes far, far beyond that. You know, I can't tell you how I've gone from, like being consumed with basketball, like eat, sleep, breathe it. Just <laughs> now it's all gone go, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, gone. And, and not only is it gone, like you just don't care. No, like, that's right, the thing, like, man. Yeah. yeah. We, a lot of what you're saying is what we went through at school is I think, gosh, you know, so it's about a week and a half ago where we had a 
deanery principals meeting and it was a lot of what ifs like what if this is going to happen what if that's going to happen and i knew it was a possibility but i i didn't comprehend at the time that just how soon we'd be thinking about that right. and how soon that reality would come to pass and it's like three days later we're shutting yeah. schools yeah. and we're scrambling to make plans and then you have the governor coming out today saying that now it's going to be, be at least through may 1st and our shift went from, you know, you're talking about your team. I'll consider my team as my staff and, and all right. the kids at school. And it was just an odd feeling because everyone in the building was, of course, looking forward to spring break. Um, but even when we got the word it was going to be the last day. It's like the, the kids weren't really excited. The no. staff wasn't excited. Um, I was supposed to be catching a plane today, tonight, to, yeah. to my wife in Florida and take a cruise, which obviously isn't happening. But right. – like you, I was like, oh, that stinks. I'm not going to get to do that. But then quickly, like, you know, there's bigger issues right now. Yes. So I, I think that's a great point that you were able to celebrate that you were able to get as far as you did before those interruptions happened because you're, you're absolutely right. You might yeah. not have had that moment. So be thankful no. for what you have. Be thankful for, for the moments you do get to experience. And I think if, if nothing else, that's a lesson for, for all of us right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Man. It's uh, we had a, times. Yeah. Um, Last question. Then I got a couple of quick um, fan questions that were submitted. Um, what, you know, I think we, we, and I speak a lot, this will not be a new conversation for us, but talk, speak a little bit about how important you think connections between Providence and, and the deanery schools, whether it's our lady or any deanery school uh, on how we really need to work together, both on academic and athletic fronts to, to, to be one, you know, to have a cohesive unit there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking about this kind of, kind of started, um, our discussion, our conversation with this, yeah. um, this one-sided conversation that I have dominated. <laughs> yes, you have. That's the, but you're the, you're the person getting interviewed. I just have to sit and listen and ask questions. Um, yeah, that's so true, Steve. Um, yeah, I mean, that's as, as we did begin this with, um, just, that's been my experience is that, um, you know, for me, some of the most formative year, well, most formative years and not only formative, but, but fondest memories and great friends, the, my best friends, actually, Tim just tried to call me. Sorry, Tim. I didn't mean to ignore you. Um, <laughs> but you know, our people that we went to grade school with, right. That we then went to high school with. And, and if, you know, it, people want to talk about, Hey, you know, well, well, what makes, you know, your deanery community special or Providence special. And, and, and the answer is a, a lot of things, you know, and, and our faith binds us. Um, but to me, so much of it is just relationships. Yes. Um, and these are lasting lifelong relationships and some people you know when you when you talk to people who are maybe outside of the community you know they might look at you like like huh what your best friends are people that you know um you've known since you were seven ten twelve years old it's like yeah, yeah those are my best friends and and it's not like we haven't we have other friends and we've you know we haven't led these sheltered <laughs> lives we've been off and, and, you know, went to college and, and lived some other place, experienced our things, but, but there, there, there are ties, there are bonds that, that unite us and just continue to bring us back together. And, um, I couldn't you know, agree I, more. I want, I want our future generations to continue to be able to experience that which we were able to experience because it is special. Um, and, and for that to continue, I believe that, that we really have to, as kind of being the next generation now, um, now it's kind of our turn, I suppose, to, um, you know, to, to, to help uh, allow that to continue for, for our, our youth. And, um, and we, you know, we're going to need to be mindful that we are truly one. Like we are all in this together, um, I think, as, as – um, you know, Catholic educators, um, you know, that, that we want to provide those opportunities for our community to have um, Catholic based education from preschool, you know, through high school um, well here in this New Albany deanery. 
It's very and important. to do that, we gotta we gotta work together and and find ways um, of of being um, you know proactive about it. Like I I really appreciate and I know a lot of people do you know what you're doing. You know having the, you know kids are allowed to wear Providence um, uniform, Providence gear, Providence shirts on sure. Spirit Day and such, and you know small things like that like as as a coach you talk about like the the, the small things are, are are actually important yes. you know and and um the message that sends is a very uh positive valuable message and, and the message that sends by you know hey just we're wearing providence gear and we're talking about providence and and us you know with our basketball program we we have i think in our feeders, you know, our, our academy system and on our coaching staff, we have representation from nearly every deanery school, right. yeah. you know, on our staff. Now, of course, we do have about 12 coaches. <laughs> you do. No, we, 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 we uh, catch some grief <laughs> for the number of coaches we have. Um, but um, but that, that is important to, to me and to our coaching staff. We realize like we have to, uh, we have to be a reflection of our deanery and our, our uh, celebrity coach, uh, Chris Carruthers, CC, who knows everybody in Southern Indiana. <laughs> but, you know, it is, you know, like we'll laugh and we'll be like, like Chris knows that person too. Like, because we thought we were bringing in some guy uh, from Christian Academy who, um, <laughs> you know, who wasn't, but he's incredibly connected in our deanery. So, you know, like uh, my point is just that even guys who we didn't even realize we just thought we were bringing him on board because we thought you know there's been a lot of intent with who we have brought on board but we thought a fellow like him was just oh he's just got a, a really good guy who knows the game and you know we'll be able to connect well with our our uh, student athletes but he's very well connected in the community too and that's important because we really do need to be in it together i think to better all of us it's, it's not just about providence and it's not just about our lady or holy family or smk or saint anthony or sacred heart or saint john paul ii yep. or or in, you know uh, we have our uh, saint michael's and you know uh, uh, all of it's 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 about all of us um becoming stronger together and well said, um, hopefully Hopefully we can um, keep moving in that direction. I think we're I think we're we're moving in that direction, and I think it's 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 time that we we keep that going because I think in some ways it's not always, you know, been been at the forefront, and now it it certainly needs to be. So yeah, yeah. Time, times are changing a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think for all of education, for Catholic education, and we just need to be aware of of the importance. Um, that we're all a connected community. Absolutely. Uh, let me check, see if we got any more questions here. Uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite pro basketball team? Ryan? Ooh, a favorite pro basketball team. Yeah. Well, um, if you were talking uh, late 80s, early 90s, that would, we can. The Boston, that would have been the Boston Celtics. All right. So it's late 80s, with, early 90s, Boston Celtics. With nice. the Birdman. Right? All right. Actually, um, in the Boston Garden. Let's see. Uh, do you have, and I, I know we're going a little long here, so we can do this quickly. Is there one memory you have as a player? I do nothing quickly, by the way. <laughs> Is there one memory you have as a player that stands out back in hmm. your playing days? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, we, we Lots had of some... sweat on the green Jeff GRC rubberized floor. Anything? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, uh, yeah, going back uh, to our, our deanery games, just it, it is it is good to kind of look back, I guess, and, and put yourself in those shoes again and realize. Hey, do you know who won the state title in seventh grade um, from from the deanery by chance? Look, man, quit rubbing salts in the wound. Was it St. Anthony? The one? I, what, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the I was I was the seventh man. I didn't do a whole lot. But. The Bears were a dominant force. You 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 came you came as a as a young seventh grader. Yeah, you came off yeah. the bench of that seventh man off the bench, baby. Eighth grade team, dominant. Came in and got my two or three minutes per quarter as mandated, and 
went back and sat down. Know your role, Bile. <laughs> know your role. <laughs> Last question. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Mikowski. He, uh, he super wants fan. to know. He is super a super fan. fan. He is. Uh, he wants to know what's your best advice on how to be uh, a rhino in a time like this. Gosh, man. I mean, you, I, I should have known that someone like him would have asked such a superb <laughs> question. <laughs> um, you know, well, first of all, show everybody. You need, you there need you go. to wear rhino gear. Okay. Um, that, <laughs> um, you know, uh, seriously, um, I mean, things like this are important. Like I said, um, because it is, it is serious. Um, it's, these are, unprecedented times and you know we are um gonna be tested i think to a certain degree uh, i mean yeah. it's only a few days in and I know. Uh, you know it's already like hmm it feels like it's been a while <laughs> um and as you said you know may um you know we are going to have to try to galvanize ourselves and um to, you know, to, to take care of ourselves and take care of each other, you know, as a community and find, you know, unique ways of doing that. Because again, we, we haven't faced these things in this country, certainly in our lifetimes and, and pretty much anybody who's alive, I, I don't think has faced anything like this. We can draw some parallels, you know, to some things, but, but this is, this is different. And, um, you know, to try to stay connected, as you said, you know, yeah. through different uh, means that, that are, are maybe not typical for us. But we do have things now in this day and age at our disposal, uh, such as this, what we're doing, right? Being able to, um, you know, uh, being able to communicate, to talk and, and to share some, you know, hopefully some, some positive, some good things and, and good memories that we had over the course of the season with, with some other people and um, just continue to find ways to do things like this, you know, find ways to um, take care of ourselves by, by exercising our bodies, exercising our minds, going outside in nature. And um, as my mother-in-law, well, I, I told you, I, I, I guess it wasn't technically sneaking in the uh, church because it was still open. Still um, open at that time. Yeah. Still open at that time. I peered through the glass to try to try to uh, knock on the window and I was going to keep my social distance. I was going to wave at you through the glass <laughs> um, and do give you an air handshake or an air hoove, I guess would be appropriate right now. An air hoove since we're talking about rhinos, but um, you know, my mother-in-law who was a longtime principal out at Lanesville community schools, um, um, you know, and of course she sent her children to St. Mary's and, um, and then on to Providence, but, um, what an awesome lady she is. And, you know, we took the kids to church with her and just talked about the importance of, of, uh, just staying prayerful yeah. during these times as well, you know, and I'm, I'm honestly not, uh, the best at that. And uh, that's something that I think I need to work on, uh, most especially during these times. And uh, it would serve all of us and probably our entire world, our community, our nation and world well if uh, all of us Catholics and Christians uh, made sure that we uh, gave, gave a few minutes each day to prayer. I think that says it all, buddy. I think we'll, we'll end it there. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, my first interview that I've ever done in anything like this. And let's just hope we can figure out how to get this uh, posted for everybody else to watch. Yes. You yes. Know? Otherwise because it's it going to be been. that interesting for people to watch. You know that. <laughs> That's right. This but is anyway, must see. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Oh, man. Thank you, Steve. Principal Bile. Really yeah. appreciate all you do, sir, for this community. It means a lot um, to a whole lot of people. And Thanks, um, hope everyone's doing well. I miss all of the uh, Pioneer Nation and um, Crusader and Pioneer and Deanery family. Right. Man, um, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be some challenging times, but we stay positive. We'll be back, right? That's right. We'll be back.
That's right. See ya. Hey, hey, I got this, this retro cup. There you go. There you go. It matches your background. There you go. Blue pride. Blue pride.